Hey everyone, welcome back to Ray Solar TV. And today we're talking about not a big subject, but a subject that might come up and a scenario that you might encounter. So what I'm holding in my hand are some midnight solar breakers. If you're familiar with midnight solar and you're a DIYer or you're an installer, you know the name, the brand has been a, well, a long time. Uh, at Ray Solar, we've been distributing the brand. So it's well known, high quality equipment, American made company. And we're proud to um, represent their product and work with uh, professionals and DIYers across Canada here. Anyhow, there's something I want to bring to your attention because this happened recently with an installer um, that had a problem and we wanted to bring it up because um, it's been unfortunately happened a few times, not with the same person, but in installations. So when you're working with the breakers, if you come and take a close up here, we can see that uh, the breakers itself, the way they mechanically cr clamp onto a wire is the wire would come in into this spot here and we can mechanically clamp it down. You can see that that actuates and it closes up against the wire. So we can see on this wire, sorry, on this breaker, we can see the discoloration and the heat and the shorting that took place. And at first glance, one would say that the breaker has failed. And this was not a breaker failure, but this was actually an installation error. And there's two things that could have prevented this. So let's go through what actually happened here. And this is unfortunately is common with this type of breaker. So if we zoom back in where I was showing you here, when this is open, and you say you have the breaker sitting down in this position, right? And you're working and this is sitting in a box. What's happening is you're gonna bring your wire and I'm using a number six wire in this case and I'm bringing this and I'm bringing it underneath. So I might be in a position where I'm working on um, the equipment or my breaker box and I go and put this inside. But what actually ends up happening is I don't get it inside this slot, but rather and what happened in this breaker is this was backed off. So if we close this up, because this was closed, what happened is the installer went and put the wire inside this spot and tightened, continued to tighten the screw thinking that it had clamped down mechanically onto the copper wire. But what actually happened is that wire now sat in that slot, moving around, creating a dead short, right? So I shouldn't say a dead short, but it started to creating a short because it's a hot, it was loose in there. It wasn't actually tight. And so what could have prevented that was always as when we install wires is we want to tug, right? So we come in, we put our wire in, in this particular gauge, and we tighten up. And we can see that it clamps. It's hard to see with this wire, but we can see it there in that spot that it clamps down. Nice and tight. And then we can't, the, the, the tug or pull test prevents that wire from coming out and this would have been caught. So one would say, well, how come it didn't fail right off the hop when they tested the equipment? Well, what happened was it was tight enough inside the box. So when it came through the knockout connector or whatever, whatever type of strain relief they had on the box, what happened was it actually was pushing up tight against the breaker, making it look like it was actually taut into place and screwed down. But what happened after a few months on this output breaker and all this current, this was capable of outputting, uh, this charge controller was outputting almost 50 amps. So what happened was it started to build heat because it's loose. And we know from electrical equipment that torquing your mechanical device, so say on a breaker or some type of lug, that that torque is so important to ensure that we have good mechanical contact and we don't have any gaps, otherwise we create hot spots where that current will build up and in 
this case, create a failure. So just an important tip when you're working with any type of mechanical equipment on the electrical, and especially these breakers, that one, you're doing that proper tug test after you've always installed a wire, and you're checking to make sure that that connection isn't loose. Now let's go through some one more thing. So let's imagine we're working on this equipment and we're using say a 10 gauge wire. And this is very common in the solar industry because the wire that we use is 10 gauge. So it's very fine strand. So if you come and take a look here, right? This is a very, so if we compare these two, so we have a 10 gauge solar wire, which is a tin plated in this case. And then we have our copper a stranded wire. This is a much more solid wire. So it mechanically clamps very well and will bond to that piece. This is a fine stranded wire. And what happens when you use fine stranded wire in any type of mechanical device, I'm gonna show you why I recommend the following tip. So let's take this wire and we're gonna clamp this in that spot and let's see what happens. So again, oh, I'm on this. Let's take the bottom side of this breaker. And we'll clamp this down. Now, if you're asking, well, what, what should the torque be? All electrical equipment will have torque specifications for uh, their equipment. And you can use torque screwdrivers. Or if you're experienced enough, you can use... Um, your experience uh, on smaller equipment where you know how taut something is by the amount of rotations you use. And again, that comes from experience. So let's take a look at this. We've clamped this nice and tight, but if we pull this out now, and you take a look, look what happens to the wire. So we can see that wire, it got compressed, right? Because it is fine strand. It's impossible to do with this small of, with a, a more of a solid core strand. So how do we prevent this? One of the best practices you can do is use a furl crimp. So this is a furl crimp. So what this barrel does is it sleeves over top, over top of that wire. And by doing so, now I'm bringing all those fine strands together and I'm crimping it and a proper ferrule crimp does exactly that. It crimps it on all four sides and creates a nice solid surface. So now when I go to put this inside my breaker and I tighten up, now I'm getting a really nice tight mechanical bond that'll never come out. So if you're working with fine strand wire and you're a professional installer and you're using fine strand wire, this is the method and it's the only method recommended that you use those ferrule crimps. If you're a DIYer and you're getting installed or you're working on an installation, make sure you use this method on your fan strand wire. So let's take that out. And we can see that, you know, by mechanically clamping it, I've kept the shape, but I've slightly clamped it, which is what we'd want to see. We would get that compression, but I have absolutely almost no chance of coming out. And so, that is an overview and an insight into working with breakers, especially of this style of the Midnight Solar. As always, we appreciate you tuning in. If you found some value or some entertainment out of this video, or you have any comments, please put them below and we'll be sure to get back to you. I'll put a link in the description on some of the products that we talked about today. And as always, our team is here dedicated to help you. Um, along your journey. If you're a new installer and you're looking to get started, I'll put a link below. We have a partner program where you get wholesale pricing. You, you'll get support by our uh, licensed engineers and we can help you along your journey.